what a great catch for you. You'll be all like, money overboard. That's what I call some nice booty. It ain't no dead man's chest, but I'll take it. Gimme, gimme. Been casting for one of those. I had that on my radar. Permission to come aboard for PK quality anytime. Decided to step down, who could take his place? What about Juan? Juan's too smart to put himself in the spotlight. Plus, he'd have to work. That would kill him. Catch a stealing, you lose a hand, pal. No order without strict laws. Heard Matt's in today. You heard about what happened at the bazaar? Chaos and mayhem. This is what comes of lawlessness. Until today. No, Stephen. A filthy herb grubber will decide my husband's fate. Is that why you got a medical degree? To go running to quacks for magic cures? Listen, we don't have medicine. Herbs are our only chance. My husband has fought for you for years. You must get medicine for him, not some herbs that might poison him. <sighs> Time to go, kids. How is he? Ator is strong, but he needs medicine, and that, unfortunately, we don't have. We did the best we could with what we have. After the chemical attack, some plants gained healing properties. They work like an antibiotic. But still, I... People here have strong opinions about healers, but you can hardly blame them. The folk healers give sound advice, but it can prove difficult to follow correctly. Misremember something, gather the wrong herb, or use the wrong dosage, and instead of medicine, you administer poison. Which has happened plenty. Because if somebody messes up one of the steps of the recipe, it could kill him. Exactly. But it's enough to listen carefully to the healer's instructions and follow them. The herbalist I know, she's talented. She's Ator's only hope. And what's his wife's problem? Superstitions die hard. Margaret has helped many people everywhere. Some just don't want to admit it. I think I can help. You'd be doing us a big favor. What happened in Old Velador is terrible. We've lost so many people. As far as I know, Ator is our only witness. So if he dies, we don't find out what happened there. Exactly. Right, where can I find this healer? On COVID Island. Don't worry. You can trust Margaret. Delivering 
Making lamps ain't a difficult job. Until today, I thought our chances against the Renegades were pretty good. But now, I'm not so sure. Hey, you. Want to be sent back to the Outlands? Keep that biomarker in plain view. Aiden, don't just stand there. Come here. Know what this is? These brass knuckles belonged first to Commander Lucas. Then, they passed on to Ator. What happened in old Villador? It can't happen again. We have to save the city, Aiden. From the plague, from the butcher and his men, whatever they're planning. Okay, but over the radio, you said you have information for me. Yes, but before we get down to that, tell me, Aiden, what do you need this database for? What does it contain? I'm looking for my sister. What happened to her? A long time ago, Waltz hurt her. He took her from me. And I want him to tell me where she is. If she's still alive somewhere, or... That's why I was looking for the GRE command center. To access Waltz's database on its servers. So we have a common enemy. Meaning? Waltz. That's the Butcher's right-hand man. He pumps his men full of inhibitors. We can get them both. I brought you here because I know that a few GRE scientists are hiding out in the city. We picked up the trail of one of them, right before the renegade attack. Sounds promising. When I find a scientist, we'll see what they know. If they are of no use, we'll find another, and another, until you get the answers you're looking for. Why are the former GRE in hiding? They're afraid of the wrath of the people. People angry because the GRE spread the infection. So it's true. The GRE brought in the virus. Who else? They say they performed experiments in their bases. They brought in containers from Haran. At night. In secret from the government. And then everything collapsed. In revenge, people captured the scientists and hanged them from lampposts. And killed the only people who had a chance of finding a cure. There is no cure, and there never will be, Aiden. That's GRE propaganda. Fine. But what do you want in return? What do you think I want? Maybe the same thing both of us want? The city has electricity again. The renegades are on the attack. For the first time since the war ended, they attacked our outposts in the city center. But new possibilities have opened up for us as well. Thanks to the electricity, we can fire up the biggest antenna in the center, on the VNC Tower Spire. Wait, you want to defeat the Butcher using radio? In a way. The signal will let me reach a larger number of people. Communication between settlements will be improved. We'll enlist more recruits and defend the city. And then it will be easier to find the surviving GRE doctors you need. I'll do my part. But what guarantee do I have that you'll help me after? You don't trust me, Aiden. I haven't been here that long, but I can already tell that kept promises are rare in this city. If we don't find any of the GRE scientists, I promise I'll get walls for you. Okay, I'm in. Good. The Butcher attacked for a reason. I want to make sure this city is safe, no matter what. <coughs> you all right, sir? Maya will share our plan with you. Go see her as soon as you can. Oh, and Aiden. You don't have to call me, sir. To friends, I'm Jack. Okay. Jack? Aiden, what do you want, son? These renegades, it seems they're everywhere. Not for long. Once we get the transmitter on top of the VNC tower, the Butcher will have to retreat. 
I'm not sure it's going to be so simple, Jack. Simple? I heard you're doing a hell of a job clearing the city of rats. Do you think they might be looking for something in the center? I mean, they keep coming, but it's not like an organized attack. Of course it's not organized, because it's being led by a madman. If Williams is really crazy, why didn't he just flood the city with the toxic water instead of sending in random excursions? Crazy is as crazy does, Aiden. Given how easily he could do it, destroying the city isn't his goal. Not all at once, at least. By sending in bloodthirsty renegades, the Butcher's just creating chaos for its own sake. So the good people of the city become steeped in fear as he sits there in his high throne in white motherfucking gloves and listens to classical music. That sounds pretty fucked up to me. But we can counteract his terrorism with our campaign of enlightenment. That's why it's so vital to get the transmitter operating. So the people know the true enemy. Then we can defend ourselves properly. Nothing. I think I know everything I need. Good luck then. I hope Nidor survives. He's one of our most dedicated men. Can I help you? Matt told me to see you. Yes, he wanted me to give you this. A little reward for helping us peacekeepers. A UV flashlight. Could come in handy. Thanks. We said something about a plan? The VNC tower. Now that the lights are on, we can use the TV antenna to broadcast our call for mobilization. But first, we need to get to the top. And that's a long road. What do you want to know? Tell me more about this radio station on the tower. It's the tallest building in Villador. It was once a symbol of the city's greatness. Now, a symbol of its fall. Why do you say that? That antenna could bring the city together once more. But anyone who goes up there trying to fire it up, guess what happens? Nothing good, I bet. Damn right. The city's potential shining beacon is a death trap. We're hoping it'll be different this time. We're gonna light it up with UV lamps. What makes it so dangerous? A volatile nest inside, so we think. It's the biggest dark zone around. Once, night runners tried to take it over. They wanted to use the antenna to connect all the separate groups of survivors, give the people some hope. But they never even got close to the antenna. And in the end, the night runners were wiped out. Wait, wiped out? You mean every last night runner? That's the problem. Frank had it all carefully planned. But for his plan to have worked, he'd need everyone. All hands on deck. And that didn't happen? Not everyone believed in the plan. So there was a rift. Frank thought they'd come around in time, but not Everyone came around after all. The plan went to shit. It was horrifying. Those who heard the Night Runner's screams on the radio that night still have nightmares about it. What happened to the group that refused to join the mission? Split up, drifted apart. Whoever led the descent was branded a traitor. And the Night Runners faded into a shameful memory after that. We shouldn't waste time on the past. We need our heads in the game, here and now. Okay, let's get going. Are the lights in place? They would be, if Juan from Supplies would just do his job for once. I take it that he didn't. He's been playing hide-and-seek the last few days, and he's late. Getting on my nerves. So look in on Juan first, see what his deal is. And when you do find him, kick him in the ass. Tell him it's from me. Hope that flashlight serves you well. Our chances against the Renegades are pretty good. But now, I'm not so sure.
Black Monday bombings and death of two million people. Hey, you seen the quarter map for anywhere? Looking for Juan Rayner. You don't appear to be on a schedule. It's urgent. The commander sent me. So Monsieur Jacques sends you? Jacques? Jacques Matt. Monsieur Rayner is not here. I can take a message. No, I need to talk to him in person. Where is he? Unfortunately, I can't help. Monsieur Rayner's whereabouts are no one's business. Wait if he must. Anything else? Now wait, but you're no fun. What about your boss? What's he do for fun? Monsieur Rena is well known as a connoisseur of the finest things in life. Food, drink, and pretty much anything that walks on two legs. Is he near any of these so-called finer things right now? Maybe I can drop in on him there. I try, but no. I won't say. Matt's not gonna be happy. Juan is not particularly concerned with the little major's feelings. Do come again. Goddamn renegades attacking the canteen. And the one? Hayden. Getting settled in the city? Working on it. Amaya and Jack sent me to supply. Interesting bunch. Not like any of the other PKs I've met. That might be because they're not PKs, Eagle Eye. Business is their true faith. I see. Uh, anyway, I can't track down their boss. Juan? He likes to make himself scarce. Probably lurking around the fisheye. The canteen? The slick bastard's even got his own table there. Bribes the cook to bring him off-menu goods. He lives like the fall never took place. I'll look for him there. Good luck finding him. And good luck if you do. better conditions than we do. I'm gonna have to get going, but it's been really Move nice along, talking to you. Well, you know, let me go I open every office. night, I guess. Yeah. I don't think I could have Back handled then, that. Most of what well, we did couldn't. here, machines Just did. Just hope it doesn't get worse here. If it gets worse, we'll find something else. Right? I've already That'll learned do. not to worry ahead of time. And what did you make there, sir? What happened at the bazaar? Chaos and or bias is what comes comes of lawlessness. I knew you want that. <laughs> you know your way around this stuff. Recommend that to all my better customers. Nobody here. 
Jared Gibson. I'm Albert, and from what I hear, you're Aiden. You have quite the reputation, my boy, for being fearless, for boldly crisscrossing the city at night, as if it were broad daylight. <laughs> you believe all that? At first, I didn't believe, because a pilgrim's always a guy with some kind of dark past, a bandit, a rebel, an outcast. But from what they say about you... I'm sure whatever you've heard is in exaggeration. Nonsense, my boy. I have something you probably don't come across all that much. Faith. Faith in you. I'd be careful with that. It's no time to be careful, my boy. I believe that your strength, determination, and courage are just what you need to retrieve priceless treasures before they are lost forever. Before mankind is plunged irrevocably into the intellectual and philosophical dark ages so your books then this isn't about dime store paperbacks boy i'm talking about the greatest works of literature ever created through the eons of human existence the greatest thought pieces philosophical treatises works of romance drama and horror all of which serve to illuminate and uplift humanity itself Losing such a heritage would reduce us to cavemen, with no better way to express ourselves than through savage grunts as we scratch crude figures on walls. <laughs> sure. How can I help? Work with me, please, to find and secure these treasures. I've been researching the local private book collections. If I'm right, many priceless volumes may be found all around the city. Of course, many of the dwellings are now infested by these horrible creatures of the night. That's where you come in. Here, yeah, take this list. Each title on it corresponds to one of the many facets of humanity. Fail to save them, and the diamond of mankind will dull and shatter like cheap glass. Remember, we are not simply creatures of flesh and blood, but also of mind and ideas. I am charging you with the salvation of the very spirit of man. Right. I'm off then.
Well, hello, boys. It's him! It's all because of you, you bastard! You were supposed to get us out of town! Yes, and then you let yourselves get caught. You tricked us! Okay, Joe, come on. You'd look after your own ass if you were him, too. You'll have to excuse Joe. He went through a lot. The peacekeepers have methods for people like us. They say there's no electricity, but somehow they managed to find a battery they can connect to your balls. Shut... Shut the fuck up, Jack! I'd invite you in for tea and remembering old times, but... You're the one who got us in here. So get the fuck out and let us rot in peace. That's right, fuck off. I'm sorry it turned out that way. Sorry? What do we do with your sorry? What, 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 what do you mean, what? Joe, you dumbass. The Pilgrim could still save us. Well, actually, how did you get here? Funny story. Oh, not to everyone. So they lead us to the bazaar, probably to hang us. We enter a narrow street. I sense an opportunity. I hit one on the head, the other on the balls, and walk. Meanwhile, Joe got stabbed in the butt with a pitchfork. Couldn't sit for three days. I told you, shut your mouth! Okay, don't be such a delicate china. <laughs> we went through the tunnel to the center. You know, with all the different perspectives and possibilities there. And what do we see? PK corpses. Man, there were so many of them. I say, let's take their uniforms and put them on so we can blend in with the crowd. And suddenly, one corpse starts to move. I look at it, and it's Ator. Boy, did I start to run. That's when the blue boys grabbed us and said they wouldn't let it slide. We were caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. As usual, our fucking luck. What's it gonna be? Will you help? How could I save you? We're dehydrated as hell in here. They won't give us anything to drink. Well, I can take it, but Joe? Mm. Help ease my friend suffering. Be human. I'm guessing this isn't about clean water. We're yearning for moonshine. Killian, oh, Killian ran the best. We had this bottle saved for a rainy day. Yep, Killian's legendary moonshine, the gas trip butterfly. You wouldn't bring it to us, huh? You want me to run for booze? Aiden, be human, Pilgrim. I am, and you, ugh, you got what you deserved. I said he was a dickhead. Be quiet, Joe. It is human to err and divine to forgive. Aiden, I admit we've gone astray, but we are changed people. Please, bring the moonshine to ease the nerves of the condemned waiting to be hung. It's not some ordinary moonshine. It's Killian's legendary moonshine, the gas trip butterfly. This could be the last drink in Joe's lousy life. Yeah. My fucking life. What's it gonna be? Will you help? <sighs> Fine then. Where is this moonshine? <laughs> it's in a safe in a water tower in Old Villador. The code to the safe is 14... 14, 8, no, not 8, I think 9. <laughs> what the hell, Jack? The code is the year America was discovered. Take it easy, Joe, take it easy. Oh, yes, exactly that year. Just as we discovered Killian's moonshine, someone once discovered America. Oh, yeah, okay. You'll definitely handle it, Aiden. Okay, the year of the discovery of America. I'll remember. Just hurry up, will ya? Who knows what time our farewell party's been scheduled for. Hey, what's up with the rations these days? They're a new cook or something?
Sometimes I wake up at night and forget the folly of the I want to see what was making so much work. Let's go! Bring him down! We need to resolve this amicably. We can't let the situation become violent. Juan Rayner? You lost, man? We didn't call for a waiter. I've got orders to find you from Meyer and the commander. And my name's... I know who you are, Aiden. After that bang-up with the Renegades, half the canteen wants to name their most precious offspring after you. Including Vinny here. But you interrupted our meal. State your purpose in one sentence, then please make yourself scarce. Oh, you know perfectly well why I'm here. The UV lamps. Meyer says you owe the peacekeepers a delivery. And you think your barking will make an impression on me? The Lummox and Chief Jack thinks he can scent his terrier, and everyone will wet themselves in terror. But what can I expect? He can't tell the difference between champagne and a crystal chalice, or water from a dog's bowl. He has an ounce of refinement. Isn't that right, Vinny? Uh, I don't know. Don't be afraid. It's not like Jack is gonna march in and have you hanged. At least not now. Uh... Ah, oh, Vinny. When will you grow a spine? You want my attention, Aiden? Show me you deserve it. What can you offer me? Look, I could help you out as easily as I'm trying to help Matt. I don't doubt that. I've heard you were a pilgrim. But you're new here. Smashing the skulls of a few peasants doesn't mean everyone wants to lift you up on their backs. You have to be more subtle with people. Everyone has their own desire, their, their own price. Your pitch just isn't working for me quite yet. Try again. Mm-hmm. All right, listen. I'm just trying to help. I, I need those lamps. <laughs> so the groveling and begging begins. My favorite part. You really need him? Or Jack? What'd he promise you? Look, you were supposed to deliver, and I was asked to make sure you do. And how do you expect to do that? Maybe bat your pretty eyelashes at me? I'm not saying you're not my type, because you are. But I need a reason to break Vinny's heart for someone else. So you have to try harder. Huh. Okay. <sighs> You've used up all your time. Didn't pique my interest. But what is it you want, Juan? <sighs> like they used to say, if you gotta ask the price, you can't afford it. Yeah. Returning to more pressing matters. And? What should we try next? Did you make headway with the pompous ass? Never met a guy quite like him before. You. Don't have a Come see me back at my place. We'll talk. Even a drop of pino. Maybe some fruit. That's the new group between heavier forces. Me guess he scarfed down five horses and had a hot young woman at his side. A young man, but the rest is accurate. He's a piece of work, all right. Well, I need him to get back to work. Jack needs UV lamps, and Juan's dragging his feet. Hmm, that'll be tough. Juan barely listens to Jack, so he'll be an even tougher audience for you. He has his own men and power base, and he loves rubbing Jack's nose in that. And what can I do about that? Same as everyone else. Bribe him. He likes fine art 
antiques, expensive shit from before the fall. When he sees something that used to be valuable, he can't stop himself. Zero self-control. Hmm. All right, where can I find something like that? I heard of an old Polish guy who lived in a penthouse by Liberation Passage. They say he was an art collector. You can try his place. You can only get there via paraglider. That's why there's a chance something's left. I'll be on the radio and guide you to him. What about you, huh? Going on a hunt? No, a party. It's Danier's birthday, but you never know when a guest list will overlap with a hit list. Why don't you come and have a drink with us when you're done with one? I don't think Danier likes me. <laughs> he doesn't like anybody. We'll be in touch. Some pair of randos keep winning all the challenges now.